Okay, well, I scanned Zeratul, and uh, to save you kind of like a lot of the boring stuff, like basically I just scanned it on my crappy scanner, copier, blah, 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 and uh, cleaned it up already. I've already like darkened in the lines that, did, that weren't all the way darkened and all that stuff. So what you want to do is you want to put your scan uh, over like uh, on a layer, and we want to multiply that put the layer on multiply and then uh, underneath that we're gonna have like another layer called color now I went ahead and just like um, just did the basic colors on this thing and um, well I didn't I didn't do the uh, the leg crap so let me let me do that let me do this so I'm gonna pick a gr nice gray and do the straps on his legs right quick that's not dark enough. If you're asking why I'm not using like one of the uh, the many screen sharing programs and screen recorder or whatever, I don't know how to do any of that stuff. I just draw junk. One day, I'm sure someone will send me a tutorial on how to do all that and then I could do like a professional voiceover with all sorts of special effects and sound effects and all that stuff and yeah I could just uh, I could pick this thing my uh, my Photoshop was less than legal so um, if I use the um, the magic wand on a selection nine times out of ten my Photoshop goes tits up so I'm not gonna do any sort of like like pick selection or whatever I just usually like treat um, Photoshop kind of like like digital crayons in a lot of ways and so what I was going to do is what we'll uh, we'll put some highlights on this uh, color thing we're going to do a little bit of like highlights on his forehead for those like weird semi cling on head ridges and uh, just kind of just do like a little pool of color just to kind of pop it And then, well, let me see. Let, I'll, I'll kind of like go along the brow and kind of make like another pool here and another pool there. <coughs> <coughs> and then what we want to do is he's got these pretty green eyes that Zeratul does. So let's uh, let's pick a a weird unearthly green. And we're going to give him his eyes. And then for each of the, uh, the kind of like color effect thing, like, like the little, uh, magic thing in his chest, I'm going to do like a polygonal lasso. And then we're going to like, kind of like cut around there. Um, I'm going to pick that green and kind of do a little bit of a darker green and then a white and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick the um, what is this, the gradient tool and we're gonna do like a gradient I'm gonna pick the second one which is kind of the radial gradient and then we're gonna go like that okay and then I want it the other way where the whites in the middle And then you gotta kind of fool around with it a little bit until you get it the the way you dig it. Then we're gonna do the one on his shoulder. I would have done the entire thing and showed you how to color it, but I mean, like, like really, like I, I think that you can figure out like what what I did I just stayed within the lines pretty much um, as long as you've got the scan on multiply that stays at the top and so that will allows the black line work to always kind of pop through and then that looks okay now we'll do the thing on his arm
radio gradient, radio gradient. And these little nubbins also had his green crap on it. Sometimes you have to kind of fiddle with them once or twice with the gradient to get it the way that it kind of like would look neat. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> So then we'll go into the knee, and then I will do the selection of the entire, well no, I'll do it separately. Because these are like, again, this is like fairly cartoony. I do pretty flat coloring on these. I don't do like a lot of highlights or like any sort of like <coughs> nice specular highlights on the arm or anything like that. Um, I'll just usually um, do the base color. Um, these effect areas. Oh, close the loop. Of course, and then um, we'll tackle the energy blade in just a second. Again, please pardon my very unprofessional cough. I have had a do nothing nasal drip cough for months, and uh some days it shows up and only when I need to talk does it seem to go but with here the Floridian air pressure and pollen my allergies have been going crazy and then no I'm not gonna talk about the weather. the weather is so hot outside it's November 21st and it's like 90 degrees outside I moved to Florida for warmth, but this is crazy. But hey, you know, like, climate change is speculative, you know, like, we don't want to, let me see, like, whatever, is there any, like, glaring color screw-ups? I'm looking. And so what we'll do is we will... Ah. I have I have this problem with my uh with both my Wacom and my that there it, it clicks too much if that makes any sense. Like I'll click something and it clicks like twice fast and it drives me absolutely bonkers. And so whenever you want to like look in on something like with the magnifying tool, it either goes too too much or too little, or too too little too much, and I can't seem to fix it. I can't. I keep going into the settings and resetting sensitivity, and so uh, it used to be really bad that I would click on something like if if you click off of a web page, and then it would it would double click whatever was underneath it too, and so before you know it, like you know there'd be like 15 web pages open because the stupid clicker just click 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 like I like a fairly responsive mouse but not um not like the NES the old like NES controllers that like would like cheat and like like hit the button a million times for you. Those are for old people if you even know what an NES is. I realize that like a lot of people nowadays um back when I was like teaching game design I'd like to talk about, you know, uh, amazing like sound design in something like Silent Hill and then remember that like half the students were like 
six when Silent Hill came out. So now we're going to do the gradient tool, and I'm going to do the weird, the weird kind of like uh, this one, because I want to kind of have like a core of white. Oh, oh, it, it almost worked the first time. Oh, that's a little too much. No, no, no. And so, uh, it gets it gets wiggly. It gets wiggly fast. No. Uh, I think that's as bad as good as I'm gonna get it. And so then, what we'll do is I'll show you like how I, I do the basic shadow stuff. And so you create an, yet another layer, and we're gonna call this one shadow, but we're gonna take the opacity and we're gonna knock it down to 25%. And uh, we might mess with this, well, it's 26% now. And so then like I take pure black, but at 25%, it's not, it, it's not crazy dark. It, it'll just create the shadow that I want. And so then we go in, hopefully you can see this on the screen. We can go in and we can actually like create shadows and like that will pop out a lot of stuff like like move the chest out a little bit from this like hair braid and then let's see we'll do that occasionally you need to get your your eraser out to kind of like fix the thing I will do a little bit of shadow on this like head ridge and then like kind of cut it off a little bit or like just do like a little half moon and then clean it up a little bit oh you can't see that you probably can't see what I'm doing Do darken the shoulder on this like croissant series of things that he's got going on. Oh crap! Okay, going back to the color, I forgot that there's this nubbin right here of the green. And I gotta go back and. side I forgot about this one too and then we'll go back to the shadow And we'll dock it in this croissant. Actually, these things look delicious. And we're just kind of doing enough little shadow just to pop them out from the one behind it. And around his face, I want the face to pop out definitely. And then here on the bottom, we'll do... do it like this and then definitely darken in well we'll darken in the cape from behind and then darken the arm a little bit of skin showing and then on this arm arm greebly thing I'm just gonna go ahead and dark and half of it but I'll leave the I'll 
see the green effect stuff popping. If you didn't realize, today's code word is popping. Emerald has BAM, I have. Because basically all we're, all we're doing is just kind of like making stuff pop out, out of, in front of the other. Darkening the chest right here. And then, let's see, we'll do this. I didn't realize until I colored this guy, like, until right now, how much this guy's kind of like a, a New Age Skeletor. He's very Skeletor-esque. Then I'm going to pick an area out here on the cloak. And darken in all that to make the arm and the leg and everything, like, pop out from in front of it. Really, we're just trying to make the 2D, 3D at this point. And then a little bit of shadow underneath the hand. And yeah, a lot of people you know, like use selections and just kind of like fill in like large gaps and, you know, to save time and all that. But I kind of like the tactile, just drawing the the areas on it and so like let's plan out the shadow beneath the other arm croissant flaky zelnaga and then we'll do a little bit of shading on it on the first layer And again, sorry for the lack of music or, or whatever. Usually I'd have a podcast on or a show in the background or whatever, but those are for, for movies in the future. I'll fix those. Hopefully, like, watching me, like, do this stupid thing is, like, kind of interesting to you, hopefully. And if not, I'm sure the internet will let me know. And someone will tell me that I wasted their hour and a half after all of this is done, and, and I should die in a fire. Which, I mean... When growing up, I was a firebug, so like I, I definitely know like that that's bad. I got already got caught on fire once. And let's see, then we'll shoot. Size in the window to fit. And then we'll darken in this leg behind. Um, I guess the, the energy blade is not going to cast a shadow on the thing, so I shouldn't do a shadow on the loincloth of the leg from the energy blade and then do the feet right quick just pretty pulls of shadow In my neighborhood lately, everyone seemed to have gotten a dog all at the same time, so all the dogs like barking at each other now. 
It was a very quiet neighborhood before. I just hope they're all rescue dogs and not some purebred, inbred, poor pup with hip dysplasia or something worse. And then we'll darken in. back of this hopefully like this can even be seen I think it'd be hilarious if I did all this stuff and then like looked at the footage later and like you, you can't see anything Almost done with shading. And so, yeah, that oh, shadow wise, that pretty much is done. And then, like, um, oh, wait a minute, let me, I'll kind of darken in this, like, one thing on the one thigh. And then kind of go halfway. On the thigh. And that looks pretty good for the most part. And so now what I'm going to do is above the shadow layer, we're going to create another layer called color lines. And so this is kind of neat. We, get, we, we turn off the shadow and the color. And what we're going to do is we're going to go over on channels and then uh, what you do is you go get the, the magic wand, hit control, and then click on the RGB. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but there are all sorts of like selections now. On the uh, on pretty much like everything that's not line work is now like lit up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over on layers. Uh, we're gonna go back over on the layers and on the layer called color lines, I'm gonna turn on the shadow and the color again, but I'm gonna turn off the scan, which means the uh, the line work. And so now the line work is all selectable. So in select we go to inverse. And then um, you can probably see the selections, but then like watch you can do this magic. You can do Control H, and it makes those selections invisible. And so even though that we don't have any, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pick a dark, a deeper purple, and then uh, get the paintbrush. And then, the, oh, we need a deeper purple than that. We need a darker, darker, darker purple. And then, um, we're gonna go over the selection. Again, like sometimes my, uh, my Photoshop kind of goes a little goofy if I fill stuff, if I use the fill too many times. And so, Hold it up a little bit. And then we're just going to kind of like color in all of the. The lines so now that they're colored. And it kind of brings off the. Not that the. the Not that the black line work was too harsh or anything like that, but I'm having like a devil of a time making sure that everything like can be seen on this stupid camera. And so what's really cool is that this colored line kind of now 
softens it a little, but it also kind of like makes it look kind of kindly neat. And so now what we can do is we come in, oh, too close. See what I mean by like, I click once and it goes twice and I just want to punch people in the face. Um, now we're going to pick that uh, a deeper green. And since we have the, the color stuff picked, all the color lines, now I can make, but you have to be careful to just get the lines that form the energy blade. Oh, and I also, uh, I didn't mention this earlier, I also color everything at 300 DPI, 300 dots per square inch, and then I will be backing that down to 72. Whenever I like post it to the web. So I'll have like a nice printoutable size as well and for my PSD. And so now if you can see you just gotta be careful and just hit the lines that have that are attached to the energy blade. some a little bit but that's okay and then let me do a little bit of touch up on the thing and there and so for the most part we're done and that's how you color them and uh thank you much we'll see you guys later